Welcome back to another episode of Creature Feature. My name is Shelby Chester and I am an aquarium technician and environmental interpreter here at the Meadow Center. I'm also a student here at Texas State University and today we'll be talking about Rosa. She's our American eel here at the Discovery Hall Aquarium and she's one of the two species of animals that actually come from the ocean and spend the majority of their lifetime here in our fresh body of water. American eel, scientific name Anguilla rostrata, is a snake look-alike but is a fish and often looks like a ribbon when out swimming. They eat small fish and invertebrates along the bottom of the lake and are generally nocturnal, so they live within the sand and silt at the bottom and is why we don't see them very often on our glass bottom boat rides. So this is why we have them on display here in Discovery Hall Aquarium. American eels have a historic native range that includes most of the eastern continental United States and Canada up to the St. Lawrence River. Any state with a river that flows to the Atlantic coast or Gulf of Mexico may potentially have resident eels, although they are much less common than they once were due to the pollution, damming, and the introduction of invasive species in many American waterways. The San Marcos River is not as heavily polluted as many rivers, and its dams are not insurmountable obstacles to eel migration. Therefore, eels are present in Spring Lake, although thanks to their life habits and like I said before, they're very rarely glimpsed. Each of the five glass bottom boats will encounter maybe one eel a year, if their drivers and passengers are lucky. The eel or eel sighted over the past few years, according to witnesses, have been close to three feet long. Hardly impossible, considering that the largest American eel on record was close to five feet. The three major areas eels have been known to appear at during the day are Wisemuller Spring, Diversion Spring, and the springs at Deep Hole. There may be burrows or hiding places that the eels stay in around these spring orifices or in the slopes of highly compacted mud that border the deeper spring areas. Adult eels like to bury down into silt or hide under rocks or sunken logs, so they're difficult to observe and study. But scientists have learned a lot about their behavior. They're mostly nocturnal, coming out at night to find food using their excellent sense of smell. The ones in Spring Lake likely feed on crayfish, tetras, gambusias, shiners, and even small juvenile river prawns, sunfish, cichlids, bass, or catfish. So basically any type of fish or crawling invertebrate that they can fit in their mouths. They're not too picky. Rosa will eat live fish as well as fish food pellets. But while the life habits of large adult American eels in freshwater are pretty well known, their life cycle is more mysterious. Eels are like reverse salmon. You might know the story of the salmon. They start life far upstream, then travel to the ocean, growing up and living out their adult lives in salt water, only to return to the rivers to spawn. Eels' lives are pretty much just like that, but in reverse. It's generally accepted that large adult eels, like the ones in Spring Lake, must eventually make their way down to the Gulf of Mexico and out to the Sargasso Sea to reproduce, releasing millions of eggs into the open ocean. That's right, each eel here will undertake something like its own version of our famous canoe race, the Texas Water Safari, traveling from the headwaters of the San Marcos River over 260 miles to the Gulf of Mexico. But that's only the first leg of the journey. From there, they'll swim even further, hundreds of miles out into the open ocean. This is where the adult life cycle ends and a new one begins. Hatchling eel larvae are strange, leaf-shaped, and plankton-like, called leptocephali. They drift on ocean currents eating tiny bits of organic material and grow larger. When they reach coastal areas, they begin to take on the form of adult eels, but tiny and transparent. From here, we think some stay in bays and estuaries, salt and brackish water environments, but others swim upstream into freshwater rivers. Either way, adult eels are snake-like fish. They may even slither out of the water to get around obstacles if they can find muddy ground or wet grass to crawl over, but they have to return to the water to breathe. Eels are obviously very tolerant to changes in water salinity over the course of their life. Otherwise, they couldn't go from oceans to rivers or rivers to oceans. But their bodies undergo drastic and amazing changes as they prepare to shift from one habitat to another. There's still more research that needs to be done to fully understand the amazing life cycle of the American eel, but we may be running out of time. Eels have been overfished. Yes, people eat eels. Ever had an eel roll? But just as importantly, their habitats are under threat from pollution, invasive species that eat or outcompete them, or changes to the water flow that make it impossible to inhabit many of the rivers they once did. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the American eel is an endangered species. This is based on the fact that many American rivers have gone down to a small fraction of their original eel populations in just the last few decades, 
and they are all but gone from many waterways in the U.S. Still, the eel hangs on in rivers with less pollution or easier access from downstream estuaries. Here along the I-35 corridor, eels are still extant in the Colorado, Blanco, and Guadalupe rivers, or at least those parts of the rivers that are downstream of large dams, and of course here in the San Marcos too. But besides pollution, dams, and invasive species, eels in this region face an additional risk, drought and overexploitation of our precious freshwater resources, including the Edwards Aquifer. These factors can cause the rivers to dry up, and not only does that destroy the habitat of adult eels, but also the brackish estuaries that form where the rivers meet the ocean. That would mean that juvenile eels potentially couldn't continue their life cycle when they reached these places where the rivers once flowed to. So please come visit Rosa in our aquarium and look out for eels whenever you visit a Central Texas river. Rosa is a relatively small eel, but you never know what kind of big ones you might find out here in Spring Lake. But whether you're on a glass bottom boat or going on one of our guided snorkeling classes, remember that eels are harmless, beneficial to people, and need our protection. Thanks for joining me for this look at our American eel. We hope to see you here at the Meadow Center when we are able to reopen to the public. In the meantime, please consider buying an annual pass or gift certificate for the glass bottom boat rides, or even making a donation. Links are going to be in the video description. Now more than ever, we need your support to keep our operation going until we can reopen for public activities. Thanks again and be on the lookout for more videos from the Spring Lake Aquarium.